She seemed to be the last one in the gym and practiced every time they practiced, every time they went out to rehearse these routines. Back handspring right into a layout. She landed on both feet. Difficult to do. Once again, that beam is only four inches wide. Pressure is really on when there's only one event going on at a time. All eyes are watching. Back handspring, two layouts in a row, and she is solid. No bobbles. Silivas came in with a score of 9.925. She would need to be perfect to beat Omelianchik. A 9.95 would create a tie. And watch this combination for the dismount. Round off back handspring, double back. Slight step there on the end. Back handspring. And two layouts in a row. And she had no trouble with that at all. A 9.90 for Daniela Silivas. I can only imagine what they would have given her had she not hopped at the dismount. That would have been a 10. Right. <laughs> over the powerful Soviet still to come and then we'll have floor exercise from Beijing little people where do they come from well in Beijing we visited a gymnastic school where we found out that they grow up from being even littler people they start them young and while these mini students are taught with dedication and knowledge there is always a little room for a word from a former Olympic star Enthusiasm is the same as the kids back home. The laughs, the disappointments, the dedication to learn. The world is truly becoming smaller all the time. We saved ABC Sports complete embarrassment by not allowing me to sing along. <laughs> Final competitor on the beam for the women's individual honors here in Beijing, it's Elena Shushinova. If you've ever been to the beautiful city of Leningrad, perhaps you've taken a ride in her father's taxi. But what a difficult task lies ahead for the taxi driver's daughter right now. She needs a perfect 10 just to tie for the lead with her teammate Oksana Omelianchik. She looks a little wobbly right here at the beginning. She mounted with a very impressive planche. Bobble there. Now this is a difficult move coming up. A back handspring into two layouts. Whoops! Big break there. Bend in the waist. That's going to cost a tenth of a point. We may be watching the victim of fatigue here. Ellen has already won three goals. The all-around, the vault, the uneven bars. She's been performing for the better part of a week. She may just be tired. And that was a brand new move, Ella. Back handspring with a full twist. Might she have been thinking ahead to that move? Absolutely. Sometimes you're concentrating so hard on the difficult elements that you tend to relax a little bit on the other moves, the easier moves. It's another back handspring straddle down right into a scale. You can see her ankle moving slightly there. That is fatigue, Al. And getting now prepared for her dismount can't relax here either and this happens sometimes with the gymnasts they tend to relax on the dismounts too and fall but she does very well with that double back just a little hop but all in all not the crisp perfect performance we've come to expect from Elena Trishinova of the Soviet Union surprised to see some Soviet fans who have made their way to Beijing some Romanian fans here as well 9775 
The score for Elena Shushanova. She will finish in third place and capture the bronze. Daniela Silivas of Romania, the silver. And Oksana Omiljancic, her first goal of the World Cup. Pause now, Camilia Buanya of Romania. And she mounts with a double layout, one of the most difficult elements in the floor exercise for women's gymnastics. And she nails it. Nice work. I had two judges come up to me and tell me to really take notice of this gymnast. No fatigue in her performance. This is the only event that she qualified in from the all-around. So she's been saving all her energy for this one single performance. Very innovative. In front, going up back handspring, double back. Great difficulty. She's got the crowd behind her. Watch this now. <laughs> Possibly a brand new style in women's gymnastics on the floor X. Here we go. <laughs> I think I've seen that in breakdancing now somewhere. Here we go. Last tumbling run. Full in double back. She is going to be hard to beat. Oh, this kid from Romania is a big hit in Beijing tonight. And she really has to drive hard into this double layout to get the speed and the rotation and also to get the height. Remember, she's going two times around. Look how straight her body is in the air. She just pikes slightly as she comes down, but not enough to get a deduction. A 9.95 for Vuanya with Shushanova still to come. One of the judges at this competition is Czechoslovakia's Vera Chavslavska. In 1964 at the Tokyo Olympics, she established herself as one of the gymnastic greats with three golds and two silvers. Then, just after the Soviets occupied her home country at the 68 Olympics, she won four golds and two silvers, but not without a political statement, as Jim McKay described. Listen to that roar for Vera Chavslavska. And now the Soviet anthem. And again, she has turned her head to the right and down, just as she did at the last ceremony. This does not appear to be an accident. You're looking at the woman that was my hero in 68. We're friends now, and I know the pain that she felt. I think the whole world knew. Interesting how some of the more memorable Olympic moments did not occur during competition at all. Elena Shushanova of the Soviet Union now in floor exercise. Remember, they carry over their scores from the all-around competition in which medals were awarded for the total accumulation of scores on all apparatus. Now, in this, the final event of the individual competition, we are watching medals that are awarded for each individual apparatus. And she also begins with a double layout. Body is a little bit loose on that, but she makes it around with no problem. Once again, we'll see the power of Shushanova. She begins her second tumbling run. It's a combination tumbling run. Round off to a side somi one and a half, and she immediately goes into a back handspring to a layout. This is a new exercise for Shushanova. Showing her flexibility here. Soviets have always had very creative choreography. It's one of their strong points. And here's her last tumbling run. Right into a double back. Not quite the difficulty of Voynia. Voynia ended with a full in double back, and that was just a double back. So we'll see what the scores say. Well, that was some unnatural edit in her music that allowed that abrupt ending. Elena Shushanova of the Soviet Union. And a 9.975 gives her the lead, but if I were Voynia, I'd be a little bit disappointed with the scoring. Here now is the final performer in the final apparatus of the World Cup.
Oksana Omelianchuk. She won the